Black people dominate American popular culture. In sports, music, and entertainment, the icons and fashions of black America have become a global phenomenon. In the past 30 years, a hugely successful black middle class has emerged, and black Americans have finally reached the heart of the US establishment. But there has been another success, one less well known here in Britain. A new generation of black academics has stormed America's ivory towers, and black America has created a new class of superstar intellectuals who are almost as famous as its athletes and film stars. Today, these figures are leading and redirecting America's national debate on race. There will come a time when people will talk about the 80s and the 90s as those heady years where it seemed like all of a sudden the entire nation was waking up to the fact that wow, there are these incredibly smart black people that we need to be listening to. But I'm telling you, don't make an excuse to yourself. Learn to love learning. It's your way out of the misery you are in. This is the story of how America has become the superpower of black thinking and how new ideas about race and identity that are changing the world are now dominated by America's new black intelligentsia. By contrast, we in Britain have not managed to emulate anything like this success. Black Britons are on the margins of British intellectual life and our universities, and the consequences of this historic failure are beginning to be felt in modern Britain. I'm absolutely sure that you would have a hard time trying to get young black Britons to say who the cleverest uh, person, black person was in their country. They don't see those people. Britain is also the focus of a black brain drain that has seen our top black thinkers leave. The result is a community without the intellectual role models needed to meet the education crisis that threatens it. You have this widespread sense, both in the black and the white communities, that somehow the academy isn't appropriate for blacks. And it goes further than that. <laughs> There's also the sense that somehow, um, if you're engaged in intellectual work, if you're an academic, that you're a traitor to your roots, that you've become white. Whilst black Britons have not been able to make a place for themselves in the ivory towers of the British university system, during the same period, black American intellectuals have risen to the very top of the Ivy League. Each year, thousands of doctorates are awarded to black graduates, and high-profile black academics conduct a public debate aimed at keeping black voices at the center of national thinking. They've also pioneered new courses which are as popular with white as with black students, and which have transformed the way race is discussed in the United States. Today in the United States, the average reasonably educated white person knows who Henry Louis Gates is, or Cornel West. Uh, uh, today, in the United States, you can have reasonably intelligent conversations around race, and people will acknowledge the importance of the subject. People will acknowledge the importance of understanding slavery as a centerpiece of American history. Today, white children, uh, white college students, are not considered well-educated if they don't know who Toni Morrison is. For the first time, black America's intellectual achievements occupy the same central place in wider American society as its cultural achievements. Black Americans broke down the gates of the once segregated universities to take up this new position within the space of just one generation in the latest chapter of a long and historic struggle. Life did not begin with your moment in time. This is part of a long struggle. This is part of a trajectory that is older than you. And you must learn about Malcolm X. You must learn about Bayard Rustin. You must learn about A. Philip Randolph. You must learn about Roy Wilkins. You must learn about your people and the struggle they put forth in order for you to become who you are. 
Today's achievements are the fruits of a struggle for education that stretches far back into the history of black America, beginning in the days of slavery. There is no slave society without the use of calculated terror. One of the elements of coercion, a central element, was the denial of learning. In states like Mississippi, um, for an African-American, passed a law in the 1850s, African-American slave who was discovered reading got 100 lashes with a bull whip. In Alabama, it was 200 lashes. 95% of all African-Americans in 1865 were illiterate. And so there was a thirst and a desire for knowledge. When slavery was abolished at the end of the Civil War, four million illiterate, uneducated black Americans began a struggle for equality that was to last for more than a century. Almost immediately, they began to transform the desire for education into a reality. This is Morehouse College in Atlanta, one of America's most prestigious historically black colleges. Founded in 1867, Morehouse is one of over a hundred black universities across America, most of them in the former slave states of the Deep South. Although open to all, these institutions remain predominantly black. They are the legacy of the battle for education fought by former slaves during the hundred years between the Civil War and the campaign for civil rights. It was a struggle that began, as with much else in black American culture, in the churches. The black church was the one institution that the black community controlled. It was an institution that the slaves created uh, with its own discourse, its rhetoric, its language, its, its imagery, and its collectively celebrated and affirmed leadership class. So out of slavery, the black church evolves, and it's the black church that creates the first Bible colleges and black college network. Most of them were not founded as colleges. In fact, they were founded as schools, elementary schools, because one has to remember at that time, there was really not enough of an educated population with a high school education. As well as the need to educate, the black colleges, like the churches that spawned them, very quickly became dedicated to another aim, the creation of black leaders. Leadership was always an important aspect of the historically black colleges. Uh, first of all, there were so few leaders in society who were black then because there had not been institutions to produce them. There were few who had gone to the white institutions. And so that was the rationale for founding the institutions to produce leaders uh, in particular fields at first, education, religion, and on the, the manual side in business or the crafts. But the notion of giving back also became an important tenet of the institutions. It was seen to be important that the leaders provide guidance for those who were coming behind. And so the notion of giving back grew out also of the sort of biblical uh, heritage of the institutions. And the man who led the way and dedicated his life to creating a black leadership class was one of the first black Americans to graduate from Harvard University, W.E.B. Du Bois. 